Hello, Uprisers! It's been a little over a year since I posted my first zine tutorial. This video is almost at 8k views, so thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, and sending me feedback. I'm always finding ways to better my content for you all. Anyways, today I am going to share some new tips and tricks from the newest scene we created, but there was one question in particular that I wanted to dedicate this video to. I got a question from my previous video from someone named Brandon. He said, can you explain how to make an image bleed from the cover to the back page? I haven't been able to find a good article on how to do this. So Brandon and everyone else watching this, I will show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a full bleed cover page later in this video, so be sure to stick around until the very end. Before we get into this, I'm Michelle, I'm the founder and creative director for We Are Uprisers, a community-driven streetwear brand rooted in telling stories of the underrepresented. You will oftentimes find us collaborating, working with activists, trendsetters, people who we call warriors of change to mobilize and transform our communities. I also run an organization called Hate is a Virus with my co-founder Tammy Cho, a nonprofit and community of mobilizers and amplifiers dedicated to dismantling racism and all forms of hate. I am so excited to share our newest and latest zine we have made. Drum roll, please. All right, so today I'm going to share with you five tips and tricks about how to make a zine. Number one, QR code. For this particular zine, we wanted to create Tway's most beloved dishes into a zine recipe book. Tway is a Vietnamese American chef and content creator whose videos you may or may not have seen all over social media. Well, this brings an awesome opportunity for her fans to not only get a zine and support Tway, but they can also watch a video form of Tway making each of these dishes. Since we all live in a digital age and metrics at the end of the day is everything, we thought it was a great way to also see how successful the zine was to bring folks back to Tway's account in order to engage. This is the site that I used, which is a great QR code generator that allows you to create your first couple of QR codes for free. That's right, free, zero dollars. I've also dropped down the link below in the description, so be sure to support and check them out. Number two, the illustration process. And I am bringing on a special guest to talk a little bit more about this. Kelly! Hey! Thanks for hopping on at 9 p.m. Pacific time. We've been working on this zine for some time now, and I'm so excited that it's about to be shown to the world. Kelly here worked on every single one of these illustrations. Toy did provide a bunch of um, shots of the food, pictures of the food. Um, so I did use all of those to kind of, you know, um, know what the dishes look like. <laughs> and kind of, I did, I kind of trace the, those um, food dishes um, in Procreate. I used Procreate on iPad Pro. My style was influenced or inspired by Naomi Otsu. She's a New York based graphic designer and illustrator. She draw a lot of food dishes too. Um, with that heavy bold black outline and then also her use of um, shadows. You, it, it looks so delicious and <laughs> I know we had to brighten up some of the some of like the shrimps. Yeah, I remember, but mm -hmm. it's just like so perfect and so amazing. Our color palette for this collection is a little more on the dull side. So then we found out, oh, maybe we should brighten up these colors to make the food look more appetizing. <laughs> for sure, we don't want no dull food. I'll be honest, I was kind of surprised. Um, you know, once I got the style and hang of, like, you know, each all of the dishes, it didn't take as long for each dish that I thought it would. I'd like stay up some nights just, you know, having fun with it. I end up staying up till like two in the morning because I'm just carried away and drawing and doodling. 
<laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it's, I can't see what I'm looking at. Hoodie, no, hoodie. <laughs> the socks that everyone loves so much. Oh my gosh, right here. Tees, and then the reversible bucket hat that we talked about. This project was just so fun to work on, <laughs> especially since it was a lot more illustrator illustrative based. Um, and there is a lot to illustrate for this project. Um, and I feel like the style was very me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even, just the layout, way, yeah. even just the layout of the how the zine turned out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did such a good job. And I'm like, I'm, I'm glad that I kind of got you into this like InDesign game. Um, yeah. I know you didn't know how to use InDesign. I was like, okay, let's just try. Number three, I will be answering a question from Brandon who asked, how to make an image bleed from cover to back page. If you all came here to learn about image bleeds from the cover to back page, thanks for watching all the way through. Now let's get right into it. So Brandon, to answer your question about how to make an image bleed from the cover to the back page will be a five step process. Number one, your overall zine layout needs to be set up as facing pages. As you can see, when you first open up a new document in InDesign, you want to make sure that your pages are set up correctly or else everything else that I'm going to talk about is just not going to work. All right, so that leads us to number two. This means that when you are in design, your pages will look like spreads. You will notice that the front page and the back page will stand alone and not like a spread. Friendly tip, if you already know who you will be printing these zines with, ask your local print shop how they need to receive these files. Every printer is slightly different, so you can either ask ahead of time before you begin your zine, or you can make minor adjustments once you are finished and ready for the last part, which is to print. Keep in mind that all printers will need a bleed and crop safe area. If you don't know how to do this, refer back to my last couple of zine tutorials and I will be sure to link those in the description below. All right, so number three. For this particular case, which is the Tway zine that I'm showing as an example, I had the front and then the back pages stand alone. And for right now, I have placeholders so that while I'm finishing the inside spreads, they will not get jumbled around in terms of each of the pages. I already knew ahead of time that I wanted to create a full bleed spread for my cover, but didn't want to work on it until the very end. And so, like I just said, it's really important to have placeholders so that you can properly see all of your spreads the way you want them to get printed. The last thing you want is all of your designs and pages to not be laid out properly. Because for example, the first spread, which is technically page two and three, you don't want this page two to be shifted to page one, which is a standalone page and technically your front cover. You want to have a placeholder for page one, AKA your front cover, so that the next two pages, which is page two and three, is technically the first inside spread pages. I know I just said a lot, so tried. I tried to talk a little bit slower on this part, but hopefully that is clear and good to go. All right, so the second to last page, number four. Once I finished all of my inside pages, I decided to work on my cover spread. I used the last two pages in the spread layout to design my cover. Keep in mind, because this will eventually act as a front and back cover, your front cover is now the right side of the spread and the back cover is the left side. I know this sounds really, really weird, but because we are designing something that becomes a full bleed spread, you don't want to design the front cover and then the back cover on the right side. Otherwise, the designs are just not going to align properly. Your front cover is going to be on the right side as you were designing, the right side of the spread, 
and then the back cover is the left side. If you accidentally flip this around, the printers will print the back as the front and the front as the back. And we don't want that. Once you are happy with this design, as you can see, not only does this particular design have a background pattern that has to look seamless, but I also have a dish bleed from the back and the front and they need to align perfectly. Th these two designs have to be exact so that it looks completely seamless. What you will do now is duplicate both of the patterns and the dish like this. To eliminate any double print, you want to then crop both sides so that it hits right where the bind will be. Do this for all elements in your layers that require a full bleed across your cover and back page. For me, this is the background pattern as well as the single dish that you see right here. Now here is the important part. Make sure you don't shift anything by accident or else it will not align during the print job. This can oftentimes be the case when you are trying to copy and paste and shift it over to what I'm going to explain next. Make sure that you're clicking on all the elements that you want to copy and paste, but without having to shift them around accidentally. So then you're going to want to copy and paste all of the elements from the right side of the page to the front cover. Here I'm going to scroll all the way to the top where you see the front cover placement and then I'm going to paste it. We're going to do the same for the back. I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to scroll all the way back down to the back of the page, the standalone back page as I've mentioned before, and then you're going to paste this. Keep in mind these needs, you have to use these commands that I'm going to list right here in order to seamlessly copy exactly where the placements on the layout are for your designs to the front and back page. If you simply just copy and paste it, they are going to be pasted on the page and it's going to not align perfectly and it's going to cause a whole nother problem. So be sure that you are using these commands that I'm calling out right now. All right, if you are satisfied with the way it looks, you can then delete the last two inner pages, which is the spread design that you are working on for your cover pages, since you technically don't need this anymore. But a friendly tip and something that I do is I either save this version so I can always revert back to it if I ever want to make any changes or if there's any edits that I need to make. Or you can keep this or you can keep the specific file, finalize it and keep this last two pages or the last spread intact as reference and then and then when you are ready to export it for the printers, you just have to make sure that you don't include those pages or else it is going to get printed. All right, so Brandon, I hope that was helpful. And if you have any other questions in the future, I am more than happy to answer them in a future video. So please drop it down below in the comments. I appreciate you. Number four, find a local business to support. You know, Based on where you are today, where you're watching this uh, video, there might be infinite amount of printers in your area that you get to choose from, or there may be no options, right? And you're going to have to resort to an online print job, website, service, whatever it may be. But I always encourage us to take a few extra minutes in our day to search for a local small business to support. In my case, I wanted to also support a minority owned business, small business, actually. So I decided to go to a local print shop called Guru Printers, and I will drop their website and more information in description below. Last but not least, number five, getting it to print ready. And here I'm going to share with you some email threads that I engaged with with Guru Printers. And you know, a friendly tip is 
if you are meeting a specific deadline, make sure that you give yourself a few extra days. From my personal experience of making books and booklets and zines for the past decade, no matter how experienced you are, there will always be something that comes up that you will need to adjust at the last minute. Yes, it can be quite frustrating and I've definitely missed some deadlines in the past, but print jobs are just really not an easy task. It's super hands-on and it takes many, many processes that many of us are not aware of. It's really just the nature of the business and we have to respect the process. Anyways, I wanted to share some of the email threads as mentioned before that I had with Guru Printers, which is a local small business shop here where I am based. And, um, you know, we had to go through several rounds of edits due to certain misalignments with some inner pages and adjusting the bleeds and crops to their needs. I really, really appreciated their customer service and how attentive they were. They gave me calls to just like walk through certain last minute things and questions that I've had. And, um, you know, I, I, I guess I don't know if they do this every single print job, but I had to print in a certain amount of quantities and therefore they wanted to make sure that the test print looked okay. So they actually sent me um, photo approvals via email just to make sure that I was okay with how it turned out. So I hope these tips were helpful. And if you have any questions like Brandon, feel free to drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them for a future video tutorial. That's it for today, and I will see you next week, Uprisers. Let's continue to fight the good fight.